If you want me to come to you, oh, you're coming to me. That's all right. That's good. Ball. That's a ball. Well, that's true. Yeah, like a <laughs> this is this is this is like a very pretty model of the Earth, of where the planet on where we, that we live on. We we are about there oh, wow. in the United States. Now, <clears throat> what what is what do you think that has to do with God? Yeah. Who made who made the Earth? Uh. God did. Now, one of the things that we, we remember today that's different than, than some of the people in the Bible is that if we read, read the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, not everybody thought about God being the creator of the earth. They, they knew that God created the earth, but, but sometimes people thought gods were specific to the place that they lived. That's why often, when they talk about God in the Old Testament, they say the God of Israel, right? <clears throat> but still in the back of their mind, they knew that God was the God of the whole world, but they still thought of uh, all their neighbors had gods and they weren't the God, Israel's God. And one of the stories where we see that, 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 that happen is that a, a really important army general from another country has a disease that can't be cured it's going to kill him and he comes no one can cure him so he comes to israel so that elijah israel's great prophet can heal him and he does and before he goes home he fills up bags on his horses and mules to take dirt from israel home with him so that he can worship Israel's God at his house. Because when he goes to his house, he'll have his country's gods, but he wants Israel's dirt so that Israel's God will go with him. Isn't that kind of weird? But later, the story of Scripture reminds everybody, especially when Israel is captured and they go to Babylon to live for a long time, they learn that God went with them. That God isn't just the God of Israel. He isn't just the God of the United States. But he's the God of the whole world and everything in it. And the whole universe. If we went to Mars, God would still be there. God is the God of the whole universe. He is everywhere. And he goes with you. That's right. He lives inside of you. Oh, me. Not you. Maybe someday. <laughs> Think you can remember some of that? Have a great week. Have a great year. was your week? See, I can stand here, I can tell right away who stayed up late. <laughs> it, was a, it, it was a busy week. Um, just so that you know, because uh, uh, prayers for Betty Thorpe's family are listed in here and her funeral was this week. Um, Copies of Pastor Chris's eulogy and her obituary are on the information center if you want a copy, um, if, you, if you missed that. Uh, prayers also for uh, Karen Russell at University Hospital had surgery on her neck last week. Um, my mom, Ruth Partridge, is person of the week. Prayers for her. Uh, also continued prayers for Carol Wolf. Uh, who remains in the hospital uh, <clears throat> and had had another minor surgery this week and is recovering from that, but they're 
it appears that she is moving towards uh, uh, moving out of the hospital to a care facility of, as they monitor her progress. How's that? Um, <clears throat> anybody else that we need to yes. yes, Bill. Wait till I come to you. <laughs> Prayer for Buddy Bolog. Buddy Bolog he heads up the Carnation bus here in town. And he's uh, up in Mercy Medical Center awaiting some heart surgery. Okay, Buddy Bolog, who's for the Carnation bus, is that in a hospital waiting for heart surgery? Well, let's pray, shall we? Dear Lord Jesus, here we are in a new year. It's very much the same as the last year, but we're hoping for something a little better than, than some of the things we, we got through in the last couple of years. We pray that you would be with us and walk with us. It, it's a, the change of the calendar is a reminder to us that, that there are new opportunities every day. We, we look back and we, we, we marvel at how throughout history, small actions are amplified through time and become, made, they change the course of history. The decisions of one person in one small place sometimes change the outcome of, of enormous events of importance. Help us to remember today that one small act, one small change today can make an enormous difference tomorrow and by this time next year and a decade from now and more. Help us to remember the importance of every small action that we take to transform the future. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for all the ways that you blessed us in the past year. And we, we mourn for all of those who began last year with us and who will not be with us this year. Walk with us, we pray. We lift up the family and friends of Betty Thorpe as they mourn her loss. Help them as they as they readjust to a new normal. Help our church to find its way without another one of its leaders. We pray for Karen Russell, who is in University Hospital after recovering from surgery, and for Carol Wolf as she recovers from, from several surgeries. Pour out mercy, grace, and healing, and hope, and and all the things that they need to, as they recover and, and grow stronger, we pray that you would walk with them as they uh, return to strength, and we pray that you would be at work putting, putting the parts back where they belong and bringing fullness and wholeness and health. We pray for Ruth Bartridge, who is our person of the week, and for this growing list of folks Our people have asked for prayer. We pray for all of them, that you would walk along beside them and, and bring others alongside of them as sons and daughters of encouragement. Each of, their, each of them have different needs, but you know everything about them. You know their needs. And we pray that you would be at work giving them the things that they need, and hope and health and strength and courage and patience and whatever it may be, we pray that you would walk with them. We pray that you would be with us here in this place. As we begin a new year, we struggle with some of the same wounds that we struggled with last year. We have some of the same problems that we had last year.
help us to walk with you and to rely upon you. We pray for your strength and for your courage as we, as we go out into the world and into a new year. Help us to stay close to you, to be encouraged by you, and to face the world and the future unafraid because we know who you are and whose we are. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for all your gifts, for your son Jesus and this prayer that he taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power Glory At this time, we'll invite our ushers to collect our morning offering.
Dear Lord Jesus, we enter a new year with gratitude. We, we, we made it. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, sometimes just seemed like a battle. Uh, we, we even wrote in some of our year-end reports that our goal was survival. And, and we are grateful that we have survived. We're grateful that we are still here. We are grateful that that some of the worst seems to be behind us. And we are optimistic for a new year. We pray that you will walk with us. We have faith that, that tomorrow will be better than yesterday because you are with us. But we are grateful because we know that we are here because you were with us. And so we brought gifts to say thanks to show you our gratitude. And we pray that you would go with us out from this place, filled with your spirit, that we might change the world in the new year. And God's people said, Amen. 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 Magi arrive in Jerusalem, Matthew includes a curious phrase, and we're going to talk more about the arrival of the Magi next week, um, but Matthew includes a curious phrase in his description of King Herod's reaction to their arrival. Matthew says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and they asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. This is the part that, that, that I emphasize today. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. Herod was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem was disturbed with him. Now, obviously, there's a number of reasons why King Herod might have been disturbed. But why would the entire city be disturbed with him? That's a bit curious. Historically and biblically, we know that Herod was incredibly paranoid about maintaining his political power. 
He had at least one of his parents and some of his children killed because he felt threatened by them. He was not a nice man. And so it isn't surprising that, that he was disturbed by the arrival of the Magi and their question about a new king being born. There are several theories forwarded uh, about why the entire city would have been disturbed by, with, with him. And the simplest of these is that when the king isn't happy, everyone worried because he was not a nice man. There are other theories. I have a favorite that will wait for another day, maybe next week, who knows. Um, <clears throat> but that leads us to our Old Testament reading in which we find that God, in addition to being good, kind, and compassionate, also feels distress when his people are distressed. We begin this morning reading from Isaiah chapter 63, where we hear this. I will tell of the kindnesses of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, surely they are my people, children who will be true to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was distressed and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. In Matthew chapter 2, in Matthew chapter 2, we read these words. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, and he took the child and his mother during the and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so it was fulfilled that the Lord, what the Lord had said through his prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all of the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time that he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, get up. Take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. And so he got up and he took the child and his mother and he went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus, which was one of Herod's sons, when that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. So you see, already Archelaus, in, in Herod's lifetime, Archelaus already had a reputation of not being a nice fellow, perhaps worse than Herod. And so Joseph was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. And so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. When God feels our distress, he feels distressed as well and chose to send a rescuer to relieve us. 
when Herod feels distress. His solution is to kill as many people as necessary until he finally uh, uh, removed, feels, uh, feels comforted that he has removed the source of his distress. Throughout the story, God's focus is on rescuing Mary and Joseph, rescuing Jesus, his appointed rescuer, and through Jesus, rescuing all of us. The focus of God is always on us, while the focus of Herod is only on himself. We see that same focus in Hebrews chapter 2 as God, through the, the rescue and restoration available through Jesus Christ, removes yet another source of fear and distress for his people and for everyone who would come to him. Hebrews chapter 2 says this, In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters. In the assembly, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service to God so that, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted." There's a lot there, but God perfected Jesus Christ through the suffering that he endured on earth. But because of his perfection, God created a path for his people to be purified, perfected, and made holy. And through that holiness, we become the brothers and sisters of Jesus, the children of a holy and perfect God. Once again, if God was anything at all like Herod, he could have easily eliminated his distress by simply eliminating all of us. But instead of doing that, God chose to set us free from our, our anxiety and our fear of the future by eliminating the power of death itself. The writer of Hebrews reminds us that to accomplish that, God had to become like us. Not a little bit like us, but exactly like us, fully 100% human so that he could make atonement for the sins of his people. Jesus had to become like us, suffer like us, be tempted like us, fear like us, dream like us, feel loss like us, mourn like us, cry like us, worry like us, feel pain like us, bleed like us, die like us, and in every other way, know what it is to be human. And because he has done these things, he knows what it's like to be us. And he is able 
to offer us help, rescue, and restoration as no one else can. When King Herod was in distress, he just killed people until his worries went away. When God felt the distress of humanity, he suffered death himself so that he could rescue us and remove our distress. And that is why, like Isaiah, we should say, I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for us. Let's sing together.
interesting and and heartwarming, I guess, uh, 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 to read the passage that when we feel distress, God feels our distress. God is so empathetic and compassionate that he feels what we feel. And unlike many Herod and many of those in positions of authority and power, rather than use their power to just make their troubles go away, God uses his to bring healing and hope. God saw that we were afraid of the future. God saw that we were afraid of death. And, and so he endured whatever was necessary so that we wouldn't have to be afraid. And we could face a new year. We could face the future with courage. Go from this place knowing that God feels what you feel and has moved heaven and earth so that you could be confident leaving this place and going out into the world in the new year. Have a great week, everybody.